This settlement was Colonel Allensworth's dream. Only black owned settlement in California. This is Allensworth, California. Welcome to the something or other tour. Now you listen here, I want my lawnmower you back. You said I could have it, you said you were buying uh, a I, new I'm one, and then I could have, have it. giving it to you. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. Today we are at Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. Before this was a historic park, it was the town of Allensworth, California. Allensworth was the only town in California history to be founded, financed, and governed by African Americans. I'm excited for this one. It's hot out here. Let's walk around. Where the heck are we anyway? Oh, we're in Central Valley, California, a little bit north of Bakersfield. Oh. Depending on when you're watching this, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So because of that, the visitor center over here is closed. I believe you can get guided tours and go inside some of these buildings, which we can't do today, but we can check out the buildings from the outside. So we'll do what we can, maybe come back later on down the road. That'd be awesome. I love this schoolhouse here. It's definitely one of the coolest buildings. In front of each building, they have a plaque that tells you a little bit about the history. And it also has the floor plan, which is pretty cool. So this schoolhouse was built in 1912, four years after this place was founded. And they had a schoolhouse before this, which became the public library. All right, I definitely have to come back and do the tour. That's incredible. Coming into the park, there was a sign to watch out for rattlesnakes. And I'm not super into the idea of getting bit, so keep a weather eye open, huh? And the sprinklers over there almost sound like a rattle, so. I'm over here, getting sketched out. Here we go. What's in there? I can't see. I couldn't see in myself, so I'll have to review the footage later to see if there was a zombie or anything. Look how cool though, 1912 schoolhouse. Wow, oh, I love it. I like the pigeons up on the roof. I mean, how amazing is that? And it's not just the historic park here, there's also a campground on the north end. So you can actually come camp out here, which is pretty cool. But here's the old schoolhouse building. They turned this into the Dickerson Library. So Mrs. Josephine Allensworth was responsible for this stuff. That was Colonel Allensworth's wife. This is the Phillips House, home of Sergeant James Phillips and his wife Bertie and their four children. When Colonel Allensworth founded this place, he had an open invite to all his fellow soldiers in the 24th Infantry. So Sergeant Phillips took him up on his offer. The Phillips family arrived here in 1911, and in November of that year, their youngest child was born. Right here, in Allensworth. By 1917, Sergeant Phillips, unfortunately, was in bad health. He retired from the Army in San Francisco. He died shortly after that. The townsfolk helped his widow, Bertie, secure his pension from the Army, and she settled here and worked here. Can you believe this place has four bedrooms? The curtains are closed, so I can't be a peeping Tom. You know I'd do it for you kids, if I could. Park ranger just came up to me. She told me some very interesting things. A lot of soldiers that Allensworth had invited uh, never showed up. Some of them thought it was maybe an investment for later on, somewhere they could retire. A lot of times at these ghost towns and lost settlements, you'll see this empty space and in its heyday, it wasn't empty. Like Bodie, there's a lot of empty space, but Bodie was packed with buildings. They were lost over time to fire and weather and all that. But Allensworth was always sparse like this. They were giving out big plots of land. Like I said, a lot of people didn't show up. So they had this dream of a utopia where African-Americans could thrive without the systematic racism and things like that going on. And unfortunately, due to a lot of circumstances out of their control, the township never fully took off. So how did Allensworth get started anyways? That's actually a great story. Pull up a chair, I'll tell you all about it. After leaving the army in 1906, by 1908, Colonel Allen Allensworth and four of his friends got together to found this settlement for the betterment of African Americans. Allensworth was friends with Booker T. Washington, and he was inspired by the Tuskegee Institute. The Tuskegee Institute is a historical black university in Alabama. So he had dreams of making an African-American settlement founded, financed, and governed by African-Americans. 
And then after the settlement was complete, he wanted to make a black college here. The Tuskegee of the West. And this is Colonel Allen Allensworth's official Allensworth California resident. Him and his wife split their time between a home in Los Angeles and here. Allen Allensworth was born a slave in 1842. He escaped during the Civil War and later on joined up with the United States Army. Allen Allensworth joined up with the 24th Infantry in 1886. By the time he left the Army in 1906, he was a Lieutenant Colonel, the highest rank ever achieved by an African American at that time. So his next dream was Allensworth. So as you can see, Colonel Allensworth was incredibly accomplished. This was sort of his uh, retirement home here. I really enjoy being here, sort of by myself. There's not many people here. It's very quiet. You can just hear the highway, and you can almost picture Colonel Allensworth and his family hanging out here, getting ready for supper. This is amazing. I mean, this is incredible to see. Awesome history, incredible history. This is the home of William and Louise Dotson, originally from Oakland, California. I'm not sure what year they left the biggity biggity o and came here. What did they do here? Well, they opened up a restaurant in the front part of this house, and then they opened that stable over there and had a livery. From sideshows to saddles. So they opened up the stables. William also learned to do some blacksmithing. So they had horses, they had blacksmithing, they had a restaurant. Entrepreneurship, huh? Amazing. This is the restaurant right here in the front. How cool. <laughs> That's so awesome. I wonder what they served. Both of the Dotsons made their mark on Allensworth. William was voted the very first constable. His term ran from 1914 to 1918. And Mrs. Dotson was a custodian at the library. But by 1919, they set off for greener pastures, the paradise known as Fresno, California. Mr. and Mrs. Dotson were living the American dream out here for a little while. Unfortunately, like I said, there were some circumstances out of everybody's control. Tale as old as time, or as long as the Old West has been around. A lot of towns were bypassed by the railroad, and that was the nail in the coffin. This is before cars, you couldn't just, you know, four or five miles was a long ways back then. So you wanted to build up your town, build your businesses, own some land as close to the railroad as you could. And while Allensworth was fortunate at the very beginning in that aspect, once it was bypassed by the railroad, that was one of the final straws. This is the Ashby house. John and Vena, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ashby lived here till about 1915. John worked over at the Santa Fe Railroad over here, but then they also opened up a small dairy farm back here. They had 10 to 12 cows, they would sell the dairy products to make ends meet as well. And this was the first house to be built in Allensworth. But the sign says that it burnt down after they left when a guy named Mr. Powell lived here. So I don't know if this is a recreation, a rebuild. Not exactly sure. It's still cool. So they left in 1915. There's red ants everywhere. Colonel Allensworth was a man of faith. One of his biggest priorities for Allensworth was to build the First Baptist Church here. So he got the plans underway. Unfortunately, he never lived to see it being built. You see, Colonel Allensworth was a preacher as well. Like I said, very accomplished, he did a lot. He was in Monrovia, California, when I believe he stepped off a streetcar, stepped into the street, and two young men on a motorcycle hit the Colonel. He didn't live through his injuries. As you can imagine, the township of Allensworth was devastated. You can probably tell from the terrain out here. I know you can't feel the heat like I can. It's very unforgiving, it's very dry, it gets very hot, very dusty. So like many California towns and settlements throughout history, the biggest challenge to Allensworth was the water. So they put in wells and did what they could, but they realized the water table here was very low and they didn't have the funding or the resources to fix that problem, although they did try. So the three big things that led to the demise of Allensworth, California. It was number one, Colonel Allensworth dying. He was the spiritual leader and kind of the actual leader. Number two, they were bypassed by the railroad and the new stop was in Alpaw, California. And then number three, the water supply. And at some point there was arsenic found in the water 
which is not a good thing. So eventually, everybody moved out of town, and Allensworth was set to be demolished, until a group of people who recognized the incredible history here banded together and made this a historic park to be preserved for all eternity or until climate change gets us all. James Hackett built this house in 1910 with help from his son Arthur and a guy named Abraham Stockett and they used it as their vacation home as they made permanent residence in Alameda, California, also in the Bay Area. The San Francisco Bay Area had a huge, huge military presence for a very long time, a couple centuries. So this was their vacation home until about 1916 or 1917 when they finally moved here full time. Look at that, the Hackett house. Now Mr. Stockett, who would help James Hackett build his house, got his own abode right next door. So this was the home of Abraham and Ida Stockett, or Stockett. Mr. Stockett was known as a very skilled carpenter. So not only did he help James Hackett build his house, he also helped building a bunch of the buildings here and then constructed his own home. Apparently the original building was destroyed in a fire and that was the last straw for the Stockett's in Allensworth. They moved to Delano County. Eh, Wild West. Here we have the Allensworth Hotel. A wealthy businesswoman from Oakland named Elizabeth Doherty built this hotel in 1910, though she never called Allensworth home. She hired a couple, John and Clara Morris, to help manage the hotel. John was very talented. He repaired farm equipment in the driveway over here. Clara was a wonderful cook and everyone loved coming here for her food. And they would have social nights and dances for the young people nearby. Everyone knows Babe Ruth's the greatest. <laughs> you can't Great be. Bambino. Barry Bonds is the greatest no, baseball no. player of all time. It wasn't it matter. the same thing. It doesn't and matter. Barry, it doesn't matter when he was juicing. Was a different None of those era. stats It doesn't count. matter what he was None doing. None of those stats, stats count. before he was None even doing anything. None of those stats count. We definitely use a trim. This is Frank Milner's Barbershop. He opened the first shop just west of this location, and then he funded this concrete structure, a little more permanent. According to the pioneer women of Allensworth, this was where all the men would meet. It was like a social club, much like a lot of barbershops today. They would settle disagreements, have agreements. I don't want to hear it. Barry Bonds was the Barry best Bonds I ever saw. Is not better than Doesn't matter Bruce. what he Look did. at the numbers. His stats choose it. Come on. Different guy take half his stats No. This beautiful house was the home of Frank and Laura Smith. They got here in 1910, and unfortunately, Frank passed away in 1911. But Laura, Laura was a winner. She did not give up. She had a beautiful garden, she had a cow, she would make cream, sell the cream. She was part of the Women's Association, part of the Cemetery District. Laura did a lot. She was very active in the community of Allensworth. Back here, Laura had her animals. Must have been her garden right there. Really cool. Well, that doll is terrifying. This so far is my favorite house. Probably because it has the trees. Although, having this bedroom right here, right next to the barber shop, might not have been too fun all the time. This is the Singleton store. Joshua and Henrietta Singleton lived here and worked here. The front half was a general store. The back half was the living quarters. Wow, that's so cool. The Singleton store was open until 1930. So this is one of the longest lasting remnants. This is so cool, man. Uh, you can probably notice a pattern here. Most people didn't just do one thing. So Joshua also taught music. He started the town band and Henrietta was a midwife and a nurse. Looks like they also had a mail drop off right here. And don't think I forgot, there seems to be commodes every which way. So here's your commode for the sewed. Holy camoli, huh? Those are some ants. It's kind of incredible to think what could have happened here at Allensworth if they had a good supply of fresh, clean water or if Colonel Allensworth would have lived a little bit longer. Mrs. Mary Gross and a business partner named William Scott ran the Scott Gross Drugstore right here. They sold regular drugstore stuff here, toothpaste, medicines, things you couldn't get at some of the other stores around here. How cool is that? Mary Gross actually lived in the back here, much like the other store. The living quarters were right in the back. Honest to goodness, pharmacy and drugstore. Way on the outskirts, you got the Carter House. 
Oh, there's a kitty cat. It looks feral. Hey. Warren and his wife Mariah, they lived here with their son Elmer, and they originally had a livery, which they sold to the Dotsons over there from Oakland. <laughs> oh, wow. This house is in rough shape. Rough, rough shape. <laughs> Here's my co-host. Sorry, buddy, I gotta go. The Heinzman house. A guy by the name of Zebedee, one of the greatest names I've ever heard in my life, and his wife Sarah lived right here. Zebedee and Sarah Heinzman also owned the general store right next to it. And like all the other stores, they did multiple things. They ran the general store, he was a realtor, a notary. They did all sorts of stuff. This is an awesome house. I like this one. You can almost picture old Zebedee just walking through here, huh? If I have a son, I might have to name him Zebedee. Is that a bullet hole? Those are all ants. Oh my God, what is going on? All right, Zebedee and Sarah, take it easy. So the Heinzmans would walk over here to their general store. Wow. General store is very impressive. Oh, it's so cool inside. It's so cool. It's cool because there's a first floor and then there's a loft. So cool. One of the longest lasting buildings here. This is the Howard House, which was built very early on and sort of just served as temporary lodging. But this house actually lasted until 1970 when this land was bought up and turned into a park. That's crazy. The Howard House. Oh, look at that bug. You could get meat off that bad boy. Here's the structure. It looks like a train car for the Santa Fe route of the railroad that used to go through here. I don't know if this is an old rail car or what. I mean, it must be, right? When the railroad came through Allensworth, it used to do four to $5,000 a month in business. When the railroad bypassed Allensworth, that dropped to just over $13 a month. So like I said, the railroad bypassing Allensworth was a huge reason for the settlement's downfall. Isaac and Maddie Johnson operated a bakery, the Johnson Bakery, out of this property here. I bet they had some good stuff. I wish I could get some to go. Maddie Johnson operated this bakery until about 1917 or 1918. You want me to get you anything? Uh, can you see if they have any bear claws? All right, I'll see if they have. Thank you. Colonel Allensworth was beloved during his life and his legacy, although some can say it's a failure, I consider it a success. And this park here is a monument to entrepreneurship, to the American dream as it should be. If it wasn't for his untimely death, if it wasn't for the water situation, and if the railroad wouldn't have bypassed the settlement, there's no telling what would be here today. Would this be the Tuskegee of the West? Would there be a full university here? You gotta remember, in 1908, there wasn't a lot of opportunities for African Americans. There were still so many laws, so much discrimination. Some have gone away, some are still prevalent, but against all odds, Colonel Allensworth tried. He tried. He accomplished so much in his lifetime, so much more than most of us ever will. So this isn't even close to a failure in my eyes. So here's to having a dream and chasing it. I can't help but admire and respect that. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun, incredible history. And remember that Black Lives Matter and Black history is American history. Much love to everybody out there. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to help us go on more of these adventures, we have a Patreon with an exclusive behind the scenes podcast. Check out our Instagram for updates, contests, things like that. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things cool kids do. Our life, something or other tour. Very interesting history in California with water, surprisingly. The classic movie with Jack Nicholson, Chinatown, tells part of the story. There's a self-guided audio tour and there's a post at each building that says how to work it. Who's down there? Lucifer himself? I feel like the ground's just gonna open up at some point. Swallow me whole.